James, Tom, this is called a Hoover. It's in back at Pro Shop office. There's a button under here, you press this and it, it overs all your mess up. So there's more grass in this swing room than on Furs Fairway. So now we've got that out of the way, I'll introduce myself. I'm Gary Martin and today we're going to be testing some two irons. So we're going to be testing three two irons today. We've got the P790, the 2021 model. We've got the pink crossover, the G425. And we've got the new Titleist U505, 2021 model. Now, first impressions. Well, we've, we've all got graphite shafts in all of them. You might be wondering why we've got graphite shafts. I think that's to help launch the ball, to help... You know, get the ball up in the air a little bit, create a bit more backspin. I have talked about in, in the past with two irons that I'm a big believer with the two iron. They're very difficult to use off a fairway, all right? They're, they're aimed at such a low percentage of golfer. If you're a mid to handicap golfer and you're thinking about a two iron, you've got to consider that, you know, most of the shots that you're going to play with it or the high percentage shots are going to be off the tee. So that's what, that's what I'm going to be testing these today. I'm going to be testing them off the tee because I really do believe if you're a mid to handicap golfer, even a lower handicap golfer, there's a lot more value in buying a free iron. So you can buy a free iron in, in these style of heads, but just having that extra three degrees aloft just makes it so much more versatile off the fairway. So for the purpose of today's testing, I'm going to be testing them all off the same tee and using them as a driving iron because that, that's where I believe that these clubs should be used for somebody maybe struggling off the tee with a driver or just somebody who's wanting a club to find the fairway with for the shorter part fours. So that's how I'm going to be testing them today. And again, just talking on first impressions, you know, we've got three two irons here and they all look very, very different. You might have just seen there in the intro, you know, starting with the the title is the U505. I mean, this looks extremely tasty and easy to hit. When I put that down behind the ball, I mean, you can see how wide the sole is on that. It really does aspire confidence. There's a hell of a cavity on here at the back, which, you know, I'd imagine is designed to create, you know, ball speed, um, you know, make it easy to use. And then when you move on to kind of like the, the 790, it's very, very small. It's a, it's a very small profile to iron the UDI, um, it doesn't aspire a great deal of confidence, but on the other hand, it it's probably looks like I'd have a bit more confidence using this than a set to iron. You know, there's a little bit more of a um, a wider profile, I would say, than, than the style of iron I would use. And then finally, the crossover, which, you know, if I were putting these in order, I would go sort of looks hard to it, looks you know, mid cavity and then looks full cavity, but they all look very attractive, you know, and you know, the reason they're doing this video is to actually find out what the difference is, you know, feel wise, distance, you know, and, and accuracy. And to see whether, you know, me being a low handicap golfer, that this sort of big cavity to wine would be nice to game or, you know, whether I would prefer the smaller head. But um, yeah, let's crack on. Now, I shouldn't be saying this, but we're going to start off with the Titleist U505. And the reason is, it's the one that I'm most excited to try. I mean, I've said already, if I was buying a two iron, it would be for off the tee, for, you know, almost using it as a driving iron. So I'd want the one personally that was going to inspire the most confidence, which, you know, this one's got quite a thick top line and a full cavity. So it's one that, you know, if you're swinging hard and you're likely to miss the middle of the club, for me, it looks like the one that's going to be the most forgiving. So I'm going to start off with, with this one, but I won't be biased, obviously. You know, I'll give you, I've got no sort of loyalties to any of these brands. So um, I'll give you my opinion. But uh, yeah, on the eye, this is the one that, you know, I've been looking forward to trying. Oh, 
I pulled it a little bit. It felt a lot more solid than I were expecting. It is a forged club, but I thought with that sort of big cavity, it might feel a little bit more hollow, which if it had have done, I would, if it had have done, I would have been disappointed actually, because I do like a bit more of a solid feel when I hit the ball. I don't like that sort of hollow feel, but no, that did feel, feel nice to hit. You know, more like a sort of a player's club. That was a big miss hit, that. I'm not hitting, it's not the club. We're only human, aren't we? But that were a big miss hit. It felt, you know, I got a little bit of vibration through my hands. So it, even though it's so forgiving, I didn't get away with that one. But I mean, it's got 192. Um, I'm sure I've been the semi rough down the left with that. Let's have another one. Come on, Gaz. That's better. That were better. Thought about it a bit more. So 220. Really, that's my natural kind of shit. It felt really nice, that one. Put a good swing on it. So 220. Yeah, it's, it's good distance. It's not too bad. Felt nice. Let's put another one of them swings on. Definitely does look nice and easy to use from behind ball. Now that one got ripped. 231. Straight as a die. That one really got ripped. I'm very surprised on how this club feels actually. I expect it to, like I said, I expect it to feel hollow. And you know, it looks like a big game improvement club, a full cavity, but actually plays really nice, feels really good. I'm a big, I do like, you know, a good feel and feedback and sound. I appreciate that. You know, when you're buying a golf club and you're playing a lot of golf with it, it's important that you, you like what you're playing with. I couldn't play with something hollow. Gaz, sorry guys, the show must go on. So we've switched over now to the G425 crossover. Now this one isn't quite as big a cavity, but don't get me wrong, you know, it certainly doesn't look like a, a blade or anything like that. It's like a mid-sized head. It's black as well. I mean, do I like the black? I'm personally not a fan, but I'm sure a lot of people would like the black. For me, I always feel like a black head looks a little bit smaller. I once bought some black wedges. Uh, they look fantastic in the back, but to play with, the head looked really small. So I'm not sure about this one yet. But as you know, I am a big Ping fan. I do like Ping equipment. I love Ping as a brand, as a company. They're absolutely, they're a people's company. You know, when things go wrong, they'll really look after you, even if it's out of warranty. I do love the brand. I can't speak highly enough for them. But um, if I were buying a two iron, I don't think I'd be rushing to sort of test this one. But I'm sure there'll be a lot of ping fans out there who've got the irons and woods that, that might want to know a bit more about this one. I mean, it certainly looks nice behind the ball. Let's give it that. It's, uh, it's not quite, it doesn't look quite as big as the tight list. Let's see how it feels. Oh, that's explode. Now, did you just hear the difference in the sound on that one? For me, that's not the sound I really like to hear. It was very clicky, a bit hollow feeling, but it's flown, it's come off like a bullet. It's gone 230. Um, it's one of them, isn't it? You know, you hit five of them, just start to change your mind about what, what sound you like. But that did certainly feel nice. It felt a lot easier off the face, flew off the face. That surprised me, that one. Maybe it were a fluke. Oh, now that was me miss it. That was me miss it. Only gone 161 that time. I can see actually it's left a mark on the face. It's come out high toe. I guess it's, you know, I'm swinging this club quite fast. 105, it's a lot faster than I would be swinging a sort of four iron. And again, it's that because it's a two iron, I'm feeling like I'm teeing off with it. Maybe I need to just, you know, rein it in a little bit, put that sort of four iron swing on it. 
Come on, guys. Pulled it again. No. It's just uh, not a good one. Does it feel less forgiving off centre than the title list? It probably does. It does actually. I mean, it's certainly there's a lot more of a drop in distance when you miss the middle of the club. And um, feel wise, I can tell I've hit a bad one with this one. I can tell it was toe and heel. The other one, the title list one, I couldn't have really told you it was toe and heel. I knew I'd miss it because of the ball flight. Yeah, it didn't feel right, but this definitely feels when you don't catch the middle, you can really tell a lot more. So, based on, on that, I would say that the title is a little bit more forgiving. It feels, this feels a bit more hollow as well, which, you know, I don't know if you might like that. I'm not hitting, I must not be hitting the ball out the middle, guys. And, you know, there's much more of a drop off on distance here. I'm getting around about 200 yards. I didn't notice with the title list that. I was missing the middle so much. The distance sort of stayed 220-ish, two, you know, 220 around that mark. And obviously, you know, I'm not swinging it well today. Um, so probably, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for this comparison, but that's where we are. Now, finally, the P790, and based on the way I'm swinging today, I might be struggling to even hit the net, but uh, we'll test it because this one's definitely the most players looking club. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm a low handicap golfer. I can hit a ball. I'm not playing well today, but it certainly does look. If I was sort of recommending a club to one of my clients, I think if there wasn't single figures, and even if there were, you know, there'd have to be a really good player to put this one in their hands looking at it. But let's see how it plays. You know, I'll only ever tell you what I see, and but when I try it, it could be a completely different story. Let's let's find out. But it certainly looks the hardest club to hit. It doesn't look like it's got much offset on it either, which could be a good thing for you guys, or, or even me, who's pulling the ball a little bit left, or you know, if you like to shape the ball a bit more, if you like to fade the ball. Yeah, it sits a lot squarer, this one. Oh, God, it's typical, isn't it? So that's the longest one I've hit today, 237. It's not even the quickest club head speed, you know, that's dropped five, five miles per hour. That's absolutely flown off the face. Is it the fact that because it's got a bit lo less offset, maybe it's a bit more familiar looking to what I'm using, that I've hit that better? I don't know. But that, that is the best one I've hit today, there's no doubt. And it's the one I'm, I'm the most scared of using. So that was the bad one. And wow, it's still gone, 235. So there's not that much of a drop off on distance with that one. Taylor made. Surprising me, a Taylor made. Surprising me. As you guys might know if you watch my um, channel a little bit, I've never been the biggest fan of TaylorMade due to my sort of experience with customer service in the past, but they are, they have got a lot better. Um, and some, sometimes people might think that I might disparage their products and I certainly wouldn't ever do that. You know, I'll always be honest with you. And this one's surprised me in a positive way because I weren't expecting it to be, or feel as easy as it, as it, it looks hard to it, but it's actually quite easy to it. It's, uh, so it looks like a game, a player's club, but obviously it's got a lot of forgiveness in there. Again, so sort of not, you know, I'm not hitting the ball very well, but it's still gone 227. And I must have missed the middle of the club there. You know, I think I've missed it a bit sort of towards the toe. And I've not felt it that much. I've not felt it like I did with a ping one. And it's crazy because, you know, I'd, I'd associate ping with being the more forgiving club there in the, in the range or, you know, obviously along with the title list. So... I'll just hit another one, then we'll start to have a look at the data and 
sort of come to some conclusion on this one. Two forty-two. I mean, this one's definitely getting out there the most, and I guess that's probably a little bit down to where the weight's positioned in the head. Obviously, I keep saying obviously, it's not obvious to everyone, but if it's in more to a lower handicap golfer, then the way it's going to be positioned, maybe a little bit sort of higher in the face and you know in the middle, so it creates a bit lower spin, lower launch. You know, obviously, you're going to create more distance, and then. The sort of fuller cavity ones, lower in the face, create more backspin. You know, obviously, probably spread a little bit more towards the toe and heel a bit as well. So, um, yeah, I guess there's no surprise that this is going, you know, a bit fair when you hit it well. But um, let's have a look at the data. So let's start by looking at the, the U505. Remember, this was the one that I was most excited to try. I thought it offered the most forgiveness. Now, looking at sort of strike, obviously, here, I've hit a couple of miss hits here. One, two, six, one, two, three, smash factor. So you can see there on them two shots, it's got a drop off on distance. So we've just dropped it below sort of 200 yards. And then 192 here. When I've struck it reasonably well, we've got sort of 230, 220, that kind of distance. If we just move along, the 790. The one that I thought was going to be the most difficult to use, you know, I've had a miss it here at 124, but still maintain 235, you know, obviously here on, on distance. Now also just remember about club speed, around 100. If you just go back to tight list, they're all very much around 100. So it wasn't that I was hitting the tailor-made harder as I'd warmed up. You know, we're all around 100 miles per hour here, but distance wise, phenomenal lot more distance and you know obviously even on the miss it here we're still getting 235 so very much very big surprise for me that one I, I wouldn't have anticipated that and then g425 you can see here i've hit some absolutely terrible strikes um just there and there sort of 200 yards 161 um you know swung it a bit better 229 that one's disappointed me really from Ping because I were expecting, you know, a lot more forgiveness on the miss hits and that one's probably the the one that's, you know, gave me the worst sort of a miss hit really. So I think it's pretty fair to say that one, I've not swung it very well today, but that might be more relatable to sort of the mid handicap golfers. And also it's fair to say that it's probably not a good thing to buy something off the shelf without trying it because we've gone full circle here with this test. You know, I've gone from probably being the least confident with a 790 to now if I was buying one, that's the one that would be going in the bag. And, you know, obviously the one that I thought was going to be the easiest to use just didn't compare. So for me personally, I'm very, very surprised at this one. And this one for me is, is the winner. Um, but I would, you know, I would always advise you guys to try them. You know, these reviews are fantastic for... So, you know, learning a little bit about feel and forgiveness and performance, but you certainly need to try these things. I mean, I'm a low handicap golfer, it aspires to me, but I, I think there'd be quite a few golfers that this one, you know, you might just lose the confidence even before you swing the club because it does look quite small. So definitely go out and try these ones and certainly don't be drawn into buying them off the shelf. You know, it's in the pro shop, it's on the shelf, it's, you know, pretty much your spec and it looks nice and easy to use because I think that's just proven that um, looks can be deceiving. So I hope you've enjoyed that review guys. Get in the comments, let me know because it's one of my first reviews, this I've not done many, is what, I, what more I can include on these things. I'm obviously quite new to YouTube so I, I do appreciate all your feedback and I'm always listening. You know, what am I missing? How can I make these sort of reviews better? Um, and you know, we'll bring some of these more exciting reviews to you in the future. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.